Let me just check what time it is and ah, why is my watch flopped off to the side like this again? I hate it when that happens. Why does it always flop off to the side like that? Huh. For years, 30 to 40 millimeters was considered the perfect size for men's watches. Some were bigger, dive watches were sometimes larger, and flight watches were larger still. Yet, the vast majority of men's watches were in the 30 to 40 millimeter range. But in the last 20 years, watches have become bigger and bigger and bigger. Consumers love them, which is why watch manufacturers keep making them. Yet, many watchmakers and watch traditionalists scornfully call big watches hubcaps, hockey pucks, kitchen timers, and wrist cannons. Why have watches become so huge? Today, we're discussing big watches and why you can blame Sylvester Stallone. That, coming up next. In the first half of the 20th century, one's status in society was mostly shown by his or her refined look and etiquette, rather than garish displays of bling. In fact, blatant displays of wealth were often considered a sign of new money and crassness. But as years went by, formality and etiquette became less important. Both men and women became less concerned about looking suave and sophisticated on a daily basis and more concerned about looking casual, free-spirited, and rugged. You won't find many people dressing like Audrey Hepburn and William Holden these days, and you also won't find many people dressing like in this photo, like Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali. Enter Sylvester Stallone. In 1995, Stallone was filming the movie Daylight in Florence, Italy, when he came across a shop selling the huge 45mm Panerai Luminor dive watch. Almost nobody in America at the time was wearing watches that big. According to Stallone, he immediately knew that the watch had what he called star power. He liked the watch so much, he not only bought one for himself, but commissioned more for the cast and crew and his friends back home, adding sly tech to the dial and his autograph engraved on the back. Upon returning to the US, Stallone gave one to Arnold Schwarzenegger, who wore it while filming the movie Eraser. In less than a year, Sylvester Stallone had made big watches trendy with the in crowd. A perfect case study in large watches is the famous and beautiful Cartier Santos. When the Santos was released in 1911, it measured just 25 by 35 millimeters. In 2018, a new version was released that measures 35 by 42 millimeters. Quite a big difference. And an even larger version was released at 39.8 by 47.5 millimeters. This one here. You can see how big this is compared to the original. As the Cartier website still says at the time of making this video, Santos de Cartier is designed for a perfect fit on the wrist of a bold and fearless man. In fact, the Santos had always represented a mix of daring and sophistication, but the new larger size reflects this for the modern buyer. The idea that you have to be a manly man to buy a big watch is found in all the ads, like this one from IWC Schaffhausen, starring Bradley Cooper. In this one, it talks about the big watch in terms of courage and stripping away what is superfluous in life, being generously rewarded, confident, empowered, and free of doubt. And in my favorite line in the whole ad, it says it's equipped with an imposing 46 millimeter case. Imposing, as if this watch is so big, 
that you have to be a real man to even wear it without being afraid of it. So why do so many watchmakers dislike or even mock the new breed of large watches? Well, first, there's the aesthetics. Many watchmakers feel that huge watches are the equivalent of a 1970s Lincoln Continental or a 2000s Hummer. They're simply throwing aesthetics and practicality out the window in favor of show-off bigness. So what happens when watches become so big they're barely wearable, yet consumers want still bigger watches to show off more? The answer is art watches. So-called art watches are wristwatches that are artistic, expensive, and too big to actually wear without looking clownish. There are many examples these days, but here are two. This Zenith Type 20 flight watch is a beautiful watch, as you can see. Wonderful sculpted hands, beautifully engraved case, fantastic dial, but it's 60 millimeters wide. To put that in perspective, in World War II, A. Langenson made a pilot's watch for the German Luftwaffe that was 55 millimeters, five millimeters smaller than the Zenith, which was designed to be worn on the pilot's leg. Another good example of an art watch is the Hublot Ferrari, a true work of genius. This mechanism resembles a Formula One engine with watch features taken from the Ferrari. However, it's so big, it's like wearing an adult turtle on your wrist. So how do you know if a watch size is a serviceable size or not? There is a lot of things to consider, but one of the main things is the size of your wrist. A guy with a small wrist wearing a 45 millimeter watch looks like a child trying on his father's clothes. Stallone and Schwarzenegger both have big wrists, so when they found the Panerai, they probably thought it was a perfect fit. In North America, the average wrist size is seven and a quarter inches. My wrists are just above seven, so I find an easy time getting watches that fit. If you have wrists that are eight inches or above, you can wear larger watches and have it look great. In comparison, if you have rich wrists that are six inches or below, you will need to wear smaller watches in order to have it look good. Be practical with the size of watch you buy. Another thing to consider is the design and style of the watch itself. Here I have two 44 millimeter watches. In this first watch, which is a Chinese cheapo that I bought specifically for this video, it's a 44 millimeter watch, but it wears very big due to the design. So just measuring here, 15 millimeters thick. So it's pocket watch sized, which means it's going to wear very big on the wrist. And as you can see here, the edges of the watch almost touch the edges of my wrist, which is a big no-no. And from the side, uh, it just, I mean, it looks enormous. If you're looking at this watch right now and thinking, well, I don't know, I think that looks fine you're probably wearing watches that are too big for you because this definitely wears too big. The other thing to consider, a uh, few things to consider, is the dial. So on this one, the dial markers are actually on the glass, which means you get the full depth of the watch when you wear it. Uh, from top to bottom, you really feel that depth. The other thing is the lugs. On this one, the lugs are above the level of the case back, which makes it wear funny uh, because the straps come straight down on the sides when you're wearing it on your wrist. In comparison, in this flight watch that I custom designed, uh, it's the same size watch, it's a 44 millimeter, but it wears a lot better. As you can see here, the dial is set back quite far from the glass, and that makes it appear thinner than it actually is, and it is thinner already than the other watch. So the other one uh, was 15, I believe. This one's 11.7. So it's a thinner watch, and with the dial set back from the glass, it appears thinner still when it's on. The lugs are also lower, 
which means that when you wear it, it's going to have a better profile on your wrist. The other thing is the case back. So on the case back, uh, even though it's 44 millimeters, the part that actually sits against your wrist is, let's see here, 37.6. So again, that's going to fit in the pocket of your wrist a little better and wear a little smaller. So it makes a big difference. So as you can see here, same size watch, but it looks like a much smaller watch. And that makes it, in my opinion, a superior design. It's also simpler, and that makes it appear smaller as well. Often you'll find that while a big watch with a simple design might look good, a similarly sized watch dripping with bling or with a strange and odd design will quickly go from rugged and confident to notice me, I'm in need of attention. Another thing to consider is how you want your watch to wear as demonstrated with this horrible Chanarai. When it's in the right position on your wrist, when you look from the side, you can see how this is angled. There's no way the watch will stay properly in this position all day. It looks to seek a natural flat angle, which means it's going to fall off to the back of your wrist, uh, resulting in wrist flop, where your watch flops off to the side. In comparison, when you're wearing a smaller watch, this is a 36 millimeter, it's, when you look from the side here, right in that pocket in between the bones on your wrist. You can wear this watch all day long, move your arm around a lot, and at the end of the day, your wrist will, your watch will still be in that perfect position. This is why watches in this size range were so popular for so long. This chart here is a chart I made, and it's basically an amalgamation of the information from different department store websites and their watch recommendations. Small is listed as 40 millimeters are below, which in my mind is ludicrous to call a 40 millimeter watch a small. Medium is 41 to 43, which I would consider large. Large, 44 to 48, and extra large, 49 and above. Uh, to me, these recommendations are ridiculous. It's basically an invitation to have everyone wear watches that are too big from them. So here's a chart I made that I think is a little more realistic. In my chart, 33 to 36 millimeters is the small. And in that range, 36 millimeters uh, for a medium sized guy actually wears very well. In the medium category is 37 to 40, which is your typical uh, traditional dive watch range. And then in the large, you've got 41 to 44, which is the traditional flight watch range. A large watch can look good on a medium sized wrist person as long as it's a simple dial. And then finally, you've got 45 millimeters and higher, which as I put in there is potentially bordering on ridiculous. You have to be very careful if you're buying watches in this range to keep it simple and keep the design good to have it look nice on your wrist. These are just my personal recommendations, of course, but I think this is realistic. You can let me know if you disagree. So which is better, a small watch or a big watch? Well, as usual, there's no such thing as better, but there is such a thing as aesthetically pleasing, appropriate, and purpose-built. Dress watches should be, ideally, small enough to wear without moving around on your wrist and thin enough to fit under a cuff. Dive watches need to be legible but not so large and thick that they'll catch on things. Flight watches tend to be large for legibility but should have simple dials. Manufacturers these days sometimes call watches with skeleton dials and other hard-to-read dials flight watches as an excuse to justify their size. If a watch matches the purpose and style of the watch and fits the user, it's a good watch. There's no right or wrong, but there is classy or trashy. To be fair to Sylvester Stallone, the big watch trend probably would have happened with or without him. He just was a little bit ahead of the curve. And there does seem to be some hope that in future years, 
watches will return to sizes that are more reasonable. Companies like Tudor, IWC Schaffhausen and Seiko have already started making reduced size versions of their popular watches. But who knows, I could be wrong. Maybe they'll just keep getting bigger and flashier. Well, those are my thoughts on big watches. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again in the next video.